when I was at Hartfield and they started showing me the, the father heart of God, that actually God loved me for me, not because of my performance, not because of how good I could be, not because of how much offering I can give him. He just loved me while I was still a sinner. He loved me and he loved me not because of me, but because of him, because of his heart. That is where um, Exodus chapter 34 verse 6 began to make sense to me when Moses wanted to see the glory of God and God said to him, I am the Lord, the Lord, gracious and compassionate God who is to, slow to anger, who abounds in love and faithfulness. Look at all of the goodness of the Lord there. And I began to, start, uh, to see God from a totally different perspective. There is this God who is out there and he wants me. And then uh, Luke chapter 15 began to make much more sense, the prodigal son. You know, and when the story was explained to me how this son uh, wanted his inheritance and what it meant in that culture, that when a son wanted an inheritance from his father, he was basically wishing his father to be dead. You know, and that it was a huge insult in the culture, in the Jewish culture, uh, for a son to demand an inheritance while the parents are still alive. And so when I realized that this boy actually had insulted his father, degraded his father in that way, yet the father gave him what he wanted, and he left and squandered everything in wild living. That's what the Bible says. And while he was there eating with pigs, and I began to understand also the culture uh, of pigs and the Jews. You know Jews don't, don't mix with pork anyway or pigs. I get it. It's an unclean animal. And so this Jewish boy... Uh, begin to ask that he eats what is given to the pigs. He's taking care of the pigs. That's what, how we are in our sin. You know, we, we smell uh, pigs. Pigs don't smell great. That's what sin does to us. And then he didn't have anything until he came to his senses. Hallelujah. You see, when we come to senses, is when our soul begins to uh, switch on that light. You know, it's not, it's not too bright, but you are remembering who you are. You are remembering that you are made in the image of God. And so the light comes on. When that light comes on, you can ignore it. You can harden your heart. But he said, he remembered, he said, the servants in my father's house, they live better than this. I will go back to my father and I will say, I am not worthy to be your son. Make me like one of your servants. That is, that is how he had lost his right to be a son in this house. But the Bible says while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. What is this suggesting? The father had always been going out every day, is my son coming? Again and again. As if he forgot what the son did, is my son coming today? And while he was still a long way off, totally changed by a sinful lifestyle. He was not glowing like when he left. He was in tattered clothes. He didn't even have shoes. He didn't look like his son, but the father saw him while he was still a long way off. And I want to say to you this morning, the father sees you. The father saw you when you were a long way off. He saw you when you read that poster about this. He saw the desperation that was in you. The father has seen the effort that you made to be here when you did not have the means to be here. And the father has already taken note of you from a distance. The father has a plan for you. The father knows about the gaps in your identity. You don't even have to explain yourself because as the father saw him from a distance, the Bible says this father, this dignified man, this rich man, this wealthy man, this well-respected man who wore expensive robes, who was not supposed to run, who was not supposed to uh, you know, serve anyone, to subject himself to anyone who was served, the Bible says he ran towards his son. And when he ran towards his son, I'm sure the servants were shocked. What is our boss 
doing? They came running after him to try and find out, but the father was running towards his son. And when he got to the son, the son said, I mean, I, I can imagine he's, you know, he is under so much shame. He's looking down, he's saying, Father, I have sinned against you. I have sinned against heaven. And as he's speaking and trying to explain himself, the Bible says the father came and he embraced him. I can imagine his mouth, you know, uh, being pressed by the father's chest and he's trying to speak and the father at that moment doesn't care about how dirty his son looks he says to the servant who came running after him quick get a robe for my son get a ring for my son a ring is a sign of a covenant it's a sign of ownership this is my son Get a ring, put it on him. He says, uh, look for sandals. Come and put sandals. My son is naked, he's shamed. Look at him, he's dirty. I need to validate him. I want him to know that he is still mine. This is the father. And so he instructs them to kill a fattened calf. A fattened calf was a, a calf that was, you know, kept specifically for presidents, for kings, for important people when they passed by because there were no cell phones uh, to make appointments. So when important people would pass by your village, there was a fattened calf that was taken care of, kept specifically for those important people. And so he says, take that fattened calf, go and slaughter it. We are going to celebrate for my son was lost and now he is found. My son was dead but now he is alive. I want to say to you, the father has prepared a fattened calf for you. I know you feel like you do not deserve it. You have blundered so much. You have done things that you are, you are ashamed of. You have, you have been to places you should never have been. You have done things that if your father hears about them, he will not want to look at you, but we are dealing with a different father today. And this father is saying to you, will you trust me with your brokenness? Will you let me come into those spaces that you have not allowed anyone to come to? Will you let me touch those wounds that you have protected with everything that you have? Yes, you look like you have it all together. There's so much brokenness in this room. <laughs> Just trust God. The Father wants the best for you. Just trust Him with your heart, with your pain this morning. Let the Holy Spirit come. Let the Father come. Let Him go deep down to those areas. He wants to fill those gaps. Can somebody give me a tissue, please? of surrender to him to say Lord I just want you to start dealing with my heart there are walls that we have used to protect our hearts so that we can survive so that we can be at this moment the Holy Spirit is here he wants to break those walls but he, for him to break those walls you have to be willing to let him break them you have to surrender you have to say Lord I am I'm letting you 
come into a space that I've not allowed anyone to come to. Just talk to your father silently as they say. Father, our God, you work and work and work in us, our God. You are so patient with us, even as we run away from you, our God. Your love, which is furious, your love, which is persistent, your love pursues us, runs after us. We were made in your image, your God. And you know what the enemy has done to that image? You come to us. You wash us. You dress us. You put sandals on us, oh God. Because the journey is still long. Because there are things you want us to do here on earth, Jehovah. So that we can hit back on the enemy of our souls. Lord, what manner of love is this? Help us to trust this love, oh God. This unlimited love, this agape love that is not self-seeking. But that is looking for our good. Help us to trust this love, Jehovah, to open our hearts and let you move in our hearts, O God. For even when we don't see it, O God, you are working. When you don't feel it, O God, you don't stop working. Never stop, oh God, you never stop. Look at us, we are here. We've been running away from you, we have been doing our own thing. You are here, oh God, this morning to say, Come, come, my daughter, come, my son. There are things that I want to show this world through you. Come, trust me. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. So this amazing father, he's usually looking for any evidence that you are taking one step towards him. And when he do, he comes running towards you. This morning, will you trust him? That's the question. This father is not like your earthly father. Who said he will come and he never preached. He's not your earthly father who said... You are not his. He is not your earthly father who has avoided any responsibility towards you. He's not like that. Stop judging Abba Father the way you judge your natural father who has failed you. Even this morning he's running towards you. He wants to embrace you. Come to me, you who are heavy laden, who are weary, and I will give you rest. Are you not tired of trying to be something, somebody, 
Are you not tired of trying to live your life to impress people? Are you not tired of the pressure that you have exerted on yourself because of what the world around you expects of you? Are you not tired? He says, I will give you rest. Rest from the expectations of men. Rest from your own expectations of who you should be. Father come into that heart I'm not asking you to accept Jesus as a personal savior I'm not asking you to open your heart to Jesus to come in and be your savior I'm asking whether you'll allow the father to come in there and heal those wounds will you let go of your God The father says he knows, he knows, he knows what happened. He knows. He knows how you decided to close your heart, to harden it, and to forget. But this morning the father is saying, I want to do an operation heart surgery this morning I need your permission if you are giving the father permission this morning say father I choose to trust you come into my brokenness heal my heart oh God I choose with my mind to let you access my heart There are certain things that will begin to come to your memory. They are painful. They are very painful. They have cost you your identity. You know they have cost you your life. Your life will be totally different. You have made choices you regret today because of those things. The Lord is bringing them to your attention today and he's saying, are you willing to trust me with this pain? Because you see, those things have created gaps in you, in your identity. And they are the main stumbling block why you have not become everything that God says you are. They are the main stumbling block why you are not in your purpose even today. You are not doing the things you are supposed to do. I want you to silently, maybe whispering enough for you to hear, acknowledge them to the Lord. Just say, I acknowledge this thing happened, Lord. Don't hold back your emotions. Acknowledge those things and say, Father, I choose to trust you with this. Because I trust you, Lord. I choose to forgive those who did this. It's my choice, oh God. My choice to heal. I choose to forgive him for abusing my trust, for doing something that he was not supposed to do for taking advantage of how vulnerable I was that day.
Lord, heal this part of me. <sighs> heal this part of me, Lord. It's not easy. It has been hard. It's been hard. I've been keeping this. I thought I had forgiven. But today I'm feeling things that I have not felt in a long time. Things I have controlled. Lord, I want you to go to the depth of my being. Even as deep is calling unto deep. In a dry and a thirsty land, I am thirsty for life. I want to live. I'm tired of not living. One by one, as those memories come, just acknowledge them to the Lord. And choose to forgive. I choose to forgive. Lord, I choose to forgive. I forgive my mother for failing me. She was busy with her own life. When these things were happening, she was supposed to see. She should have noticed something. She didn't. I'm angry at her for failing me. That man that she brought into our house, he did things to me and she didn't even notice. At times I felt that she knew and she just ignored it because that man was more important to her than I was. I choose to forgive her, Lord. I choose to forgive her. That cousin that did things to you when we were young and we were all sleeping together in the same house and the parents were not even careful because you're a girl child and you're with teenagers and things happened that you have blocked, they have affected how you look at life, at intimacy bring it before him, let him heal that disappointment after disappointment seems like disappointment is following you when you think there is hope when you have believed God and you think this is a solution from him another disappointment hits you it has left you with no hope for the future you don't look forward to tomorrow come before him Surrender that. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who Wait, man. 